Democratic strategist David Axelrod has some advice for Hillary Clinton. Stop shifting the blame for 2016 and move on. Well, first of all, let, let me say that the 2016 race oh, was a miserable slog and nobody in America is eager to relitigate it except the combatants who keep going back to it. Uh, but beyond that, what I look, she has a legitimate beef because Comey's letter was instrumental, I think, in her defeat. Uh, so in a narrow sense, she's right about it. But Jim Comey didn't tell her not to campaign in Wisconsin after the convention. Jim Comey didn't say, don't put any resources into Michigan until the final week uh, of the campaign. And, and one of the things that hindered her in the campaign was a sense that she never fully was willing to take responsibility for her mistakes, particularly that server. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, she, she wouldn't take responsibility. What do you think I've been saying for a very long time? Now, as far as miserable slog, that is being kind. 2016 was the worst election in my lifetime. Not only in the results, <laughs> we got Donald Trump, but it was just bad overall. Bad campaigning, incredibly negative, no issues being talked about. It was, uh, to paraphrase Trump, disaster, sad. Anyway, now, uh, I, I don't agree that the server and the Comey letter had a huge impact, but and anyway, I do think it does maybe had a little bit of impact, but not certainly not enough and certainly not as big as what Washington tends to believe. So I disagree a little bit with Axelrod on this one. Um, in fact, according to Democrats' own findings, in focus groups and polls, Clinton lost because she had no economic vision for the working class. Uh, look, I, I keep, keep hearing on from voters that, hey, man, we, we don't know what Hillary Clinton stands for. We don't know what the Democratic Party stands for. Um, and all she did was say, Trump is bad. Trump is bad. Well, you're not going to win on that. And, and I talked about that. Um, and look, it's, it, again, you can't win on this, uh, especially if the voters think that you only support the wealthy and the special interests, and just your party. So anyway, I guess you can't win on that as this election has shown. Now, other than that, of course, Axelrod, he does get it. Comey did not prevent her investing resources into Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Comey didn't stop her from campaigning in those areas. That letter didn't do a whole lot. Now, the point is, is that sure, she won the popular vote, but in our system as it exists now, that's not enough. And I'm not defending that system by, by far. In fact, that very same system is very undemocratic. And it kind of reminds me of the superdelegate system, which is also wildly undemocratic. And that's kind of how we got Hillary Clinton in the first place. But anyway, the point is she knew that system. She knew those places were important. She didn't invest the resources. She didn't campaign in the ground. She instead, she listened to consultants, poured money into television ads, and essentially followed the models that were obviously painfully wrong and the polls that were also wrong. Now, Axelrod, again, he's going to offer some more advice to Hillary Clinton and basically tell her, hey, you, need to, you need to drop it. You need to cut it out. If I were her, if I were advising her, I would say, don't do this. Don't go back and, and appear like, uh, as if you're shifting responsibility off of you. She said the words, I'm responsible, but the, everything else suggested that she doesn't really feel that way. And I don't think that, that helps her uh, in the long run. So uh, if I were her, I would move on. What? Look, I think she would have been well served to just stop it the, before she got to. But the reason I lost... Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a lot of work to lose to Donald Trump. Let me tell you, he was the least popular presidential candidate to win in the history of polling. And so it wasn't just the Comey letter. The fact that she was in a position to lose because of the Comey letter uh, is uh, something that uh, deserves some introspection. And maybe it will come in her book. But if I were her, I would just, if she's got a book coming out, let the book speak for itself and don't get invo involved in these sidebar conversations. Savage. It takes a lot of work to lose to Donald Trump. Oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, look, this isn't coming from a Bernie Sanders guy. This isn't coming from some wild eyed progressive. This is David Axelrod. Okay. This was chief strategist 
for both of Barack Obama's presidential campaigns. And he was also a former Obama White House senior advisor. So this is somebody who was part of the establishment. This is somebody who, you know, uh, look, again, he did help beat her. I, I do understand that in both election campaigns. But at the same time, this is somebody who didn't want Trump to win. This is somebody who wanted Hillary Clinton to win. And even he's out here saying, boy, you done fucked up, girl. That's essentially it. He gets it. He understands. And the problem is she keeps shifting the blame. Comey, WikiLeaks, sexism, Jill Stein. Look, I've, I've talked about this before. Her campaign died a death of a thousand cuts. Okay. Not a hundred percent her fault, but mostly her fault. I would say probably what? 70% of her fault. If I wanted to assign any number, 70, 75. Uh, a great deal of things that she did wrong in the campaign. And she says, well, I do admit that I made some mistakes. Well, gee, that's at least you admit some. But again, it's that shifting of the blame. Oh, I would have won if it weren't for Comey. No, dude, your problems started way before Comey. Uh, you had a lot of issues. No, her campaign was bad because it didn't focus on the issues. If you don't learn the lessons of the past... You were doomed to repeat them. That's why I continue to keep bringing them up. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to lose to Donald Trump again in 2020. It just doesn't work. Okay. I don't, I don't want it. I want, I don't want this to happen. I want to win. And more importantly, I want to get good policy implemented, not the disastrous policies that we're getting with another Trump uh, presidency. And if you ignore the problems that lead to your losses, again, under president Barack Obama, uh, we lost the Democrats. They lost the Senate. They lost the House. They lost 69 out of 99 legislatures. The Republicans now control all branches of government. This is a disaster. If you don't learn from that disaster and fix the mistakes, then you are never going to win again. You're going to keep losing to madmen like Trump or, or even just your normal establishment Republican. Axelrod gets it. Bernie Sanders got this. He knew this way before even the election. That's why he jumped in. He's like, I don't want to bring this back to, I don't want to bring the White House back to Clinton. That's how we got into these problems in the first place. So I'm going to run. I'm going to step in and I'm going to see how well I do. And he did very, very well. He cut up a 60 point lead and nearly won the nomination. That's pretty good. And that shows, of course, how most Americans were tired of establishment politics. And again, that's why he ran. Now, the point is that just like Axelrod, I really don't want to keep relitigating this, right? I actually don't like doing these segments. I hate dumping on Clinton all the time. I'm sure she's a lovely person in, in person. But I, I got to get through their heads, man. I, I got to keep repeating this until these establishment people get this. And again, the establishment, they're not all bad people. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to point that out. And I, and I want to make you to understand that these aren't terrible people. They're not actually out there in smoke-filled rooms trying to destroy you. No, it's just they're, they're in this establishment bubble. And they think, well, if I help rich people, it helps everybody else. So I'm going to mainly help rich people. I know rich people. I go to cocktail circuits. I, I, go to, I go to lunch with them, with bankers. They're perfectly fine people. And they just happen to have lots of money to help me win my re-election campaigns that I need. Well, I'm going to listen to them. And not going to really listen as much to regular people. Well, that's how you lose because it turns out that you need regular people to vote. You need to listen to regular people. But again, I hate doing these segments because I have to keep repeating myself because they will not listen until the Democrats can come to terms to why they lost and stop shifting the blame to everybody else but themselves. I'm going to have to keep doing these segments. And again, you're going to have to keep making me repeat myself over and over and over until you get it. And I'm not going to stop until you get it. Because right now, as I see it, the Democrats still have some time to save themselves. They do. By changing. By, stop, by not taking corporate money. By admitting their mistakes. Embracing progressive policies like Medicare for All. That is incredibly popular with the American public. And with Democrats. Over 80% of Democrats want Medicare for All. What is Dianne Feinstein doing? She's saying, oh, Medicare for all. I don't, I, I'm not on board with that. I'm not there yet. And then hopping off and going fundraise and doing fundraising with uh, or fundraisers with giant healthcare corporations and pharmaceutical companies. These politicians are not in line 
with what the base wants, with what the voters want. Voters want progressive policy. The politicians do not. They need to get on board with what the American people want. And, they're, and if they do that, then they're going to actually win. If they stop taking corporate money, they're going to actually win. Because the American people, they're going to see the party represents them again. And they're going to sign up and they're going to sign in and they're going to get together and they're going to crush Donald Trump. They're going to maul the Republicans because, look, again, these these popular these policies are popular and Americans want change. They want change. And that's what this election was all about. And look, resistance. I hear a lot about the resistance, right? Well, the resistance to me. And this doesn't necessarily uh, hold true to everyone in the resistance, apparently. But the resistance to me means both resisting Donald Trump and his ridiculous, horrible policies, uh, Republican policies, and as well as resisting the neoliberal establishment. Because you wouldn't have Donald Trump if you hadn't set the stage for him to come in with his right-wing populism, with the stagnating wages with the loss of benefits, with the loss of the middle class, with the crushing of unions. You wouldn't have these issues if you didn't have that neoliberal corporatism that has un infected our, politi our politicians from both sides of the aisle. You get rid of that in the Democratic Party, you resist that, then you're going to be m on a much better fitting uh, a footing to resist Trump and the Republicans, and I guarantee you will crush them come 2018 and 2020. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.